I work as a staff member in a city hospital morgue. It has been five years now, but I still get horrible nightmares of one particular incident. The morgue is in the basement of the building. I am a male in my late 20s. I was well aware of the mental impact caused by such kind of jobs. Residing 12 hours in a morgue is not very entertaining, that's for sure. At the beginning of my tenure, I was often assigned to day shifts. After working there for two years without any trouble, one day my supervisor called me for an emergency meeting. My supervisor told me that the guy who used to work the night shifts has recently left the job, so they need someone to cover for him until a new recruitment arrives. I accepted the shift to impress my higher authorities and they handed me over a new schedule. I got assigned for the night shift from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. for a week. The first three days went like usual, but I must say at night, it felt really spooky. To pass the time, I often took rounds of the morgue. Sometimes, I used to visit the emergency ward, which was right above the morgue. One night, I was sitting in my cabin and drafting the reports, just when a colleague of mine called me to the emergency ward. After reaching there, I came to know that a patient in cabin number three has just passed away. The man met with a horrible accident. I saw two to three doctors coming out of cabin three. Their white jackets were drenched in blood. I got instructions to take the dead body into the morgue and post-mortem will take place the next morning. I have seen enough dead bodies already, but as I stepped inside the cabin, my heart stopped. With wide, shaken eyes, I saw a completely mutilated corpse lying on the bed. There was blood all over the bed. Flesh was gushing out from the cuts on his legs and hands. But that wasn't the scariest part. As I noticed the man's face, a chill went down my spine. His head was faced towards me. With a wide open mouth, the man was staring at me. His eyes were cold and dead still. For a moment, I felt the man blinked at me. Just then, my colleague patted me on my back and I came back to my senses. My colleague said, Come on, John, what are you waiting for? I didn't say anything and started my work. I lifted the corpse onto a stretcher and headed towards the morgue. I got onto the lift. For the first time in my life, I was feeling uncomfortable inside an empty lift with a dead body. After reaching the morgue, I unzipped the back cover and once again, that vicious face came out. I put the body inside the vault and came back to my cabin. I sat down and started to write the reports again. There was absolute silence in the basement area. Generally, that's how things often are at night in the morgue section, but the silence of that night made my skin crawl. Don't know how long I went with my work, but a sudden sound broke my concentration. I heard footsteps outside, as if someone is walking in the corridor. I got up and came out of my cabin. The room where the dead bodies are kept lies at the end of the corridor. I saw the doors were closed and the corridor was completely empty. I was walking towards the main room when suddenly I felt someone was walking behind me. I turned around, but there wasn't anyone. I blamed my stupid head for imagining all this. The main room was perfectly fine. Everything was in its place. Only the door of vault number three was wide open. This is the vault where I kept the man's dead body a few hours back. With a sense of fear, I reached near the vault and pulled out the stretcher. The man's body was still lying on it, but this time, his wide mouth was closed. Not just that, a weird grin appeared on his face. It felt like he was looking at me with his dead eyes and smirking at me. I said to myself, fuck it, I am going home. I immediately pushed the stretcher back inside and decided to leave for home. I planned to call my supervisor and make up a story about feeling sick. I was almost near the exit of the main room when I heard a sound coming behind me. I turned around and saw the man crawling out of that vault like a creature from hell. His entire body was covered in blood. His eyes were even wider now, as if they will come out any time. I couldn't move and kept witnessing this horror in front of my eyes. 
The man came out and stood on the floor. Blood was dripping from his body. The entire floor beneath his feet turned red with blood. I said in a panicked voice, You! You are supposed to be dead! But the man laughed in a very low, creepy voice and replied, You know what's the best part about being dead? You don't feel anything anymore. I couldn't believe that I was standing face to face with a living dead body. I was about to scream when the man rushed to my face. I can't explain how he did that, but it was like he swept his way like wind and stopped right at my face. His eyes were right in front of mine. I didn't know what to do then, but an idea came to my mind. I asked him, what do you want? Please, let me help you. The man now looked up and said, I was poisoned before getting into the car. Tell them to check the post-mortem. They must know the truth or she will live free. I was about to ask him who, but suddenly the lift door opened and I turned back. I saw my colleague upstairs coming towards the main room with a few doctors. He told me, John, you still here? There's hardly any work here today. You could have left early today. I looked back at the vault and everything seemed like nothing happened here a few moments back. There was no sign of blood or that man. Feeling messed up in my head, I started to walk to my cabin. But before getting inside, I told my colleague and those doctors, I don't know why, but I feel like there was some other reason behind this man's death. He didn't just die because of the accident. They all gave me a surprise look, but I got inside, took my bag, and left for home. The next morning, I got a phone call from a colleague. He told me, Oh my God, John, how did you know? I mean, it anyway would have come out in the post-mortem report, but how come you were so sure? At first, I failed to understand what he meant, so I asked, What are you talking about? My colleague replied, That man, the dead body recovered from the road accident last night? Traces of poison has been found in his stomach. Doctors are saying he was poisoned before he got into the car. This is now a criminal case. Cops are all over the hospital. I started to sweat like hell. That means it all actually happened. The man's ghost was there in front of my eyes. I sat down at the chair nearby. It took me time to deal with the fact that I have not only experienced a supernatural occurrence, but also talked to the haunting spirit of a dead man. The case continued for a while until the cops arrested his girlfriend for poisoning him before he left her house. I realized that by she, the man meant her. I didn't leave my job after this incident. The man visited me for one last time. The day his girlfriend got sentenced for first degree murder charges, I was working another night shift in the morgue. I just finished placing a corpse inside vault number three. As I turned to go to my cabin, I saw that man standing in front of the lift. This time, he had a big smile on his face. His body was disfigured like before, but his face was looking more fearful than before. His ear-to-ear -ear smiles still haunts me at night. I just stood there because I had no idea he will come to visit me again. But this time, he didn't say anything. He just lifted up his head. The flesh was hanging from it, making his bone gush out of them. Then, he waved me goodbye and disappeared into thin air. My girlfriend and I are passionate about road trips, but things wouldn't have taken a bad turn if our passion stayed within its limits. One rainy night, Stella and I were coming back from a road trip. The rain started to grow heavy. It was becoming difficult to drive amidst the rain and the thunderstorm. So we decided to stop at the side of the highway. I was worried that waiting on the highway during a thunderstorm is not a safe option. I was thinking what to do next when Stella said, Look, Mark, there's a building on the left turn nearby. I followed her eyes and saw a building-type structure peeking behind the trees at some distance. Stella said, Let's go there. We might find some shelter for the night. At that moment, it seemed like a good idea, so I took the left turn. As we stopped near the building, I realized it was an abandoned hospital. We got out from the car and ran inside. 
The big glass door of the entrance was already broken. As we entered the hospital, I realized no living creature has entered this place in a very long time. There was broken furniture and shattered glass everywhere. Raindrops were piercing the damp ceiling and falling on the floor. The sound of water dripping on the floor combined with the rusty wind coming in from the broken window created a spooky ambiance all around us. Stella said in a low voice, <laughs> This looks like an adventure. My wife Stella is a horror fiction writer. Hence, spooky settings like these excite her. We went to explore many abandoned and old places for her creative exploration. I smiled and said, Yeah, let's look around. Who knows, you might get a story out of this place. If I knew my joke would take a horrifying turn, I would have left that place right then and there. Stella and I started to explore the place. We turned on the flashlights of our phones. On our left stood a passage. There were many cabins in the passage. We walked in the passage and opened the door of the first cabin. There was a worn out dirty bed inside. Near the bed stood a table and a chair. The odd thing that caught my eyes was belt straps attached to the handle of the bed. I have never seen such unusual hospital beds. Most of the cabins were like this. Every bed inside those cabins had belt straps attached to it. Stella got bored after a while and said, There's nothing here to see. Let's go upstairs. We took the stairway on the right side. There were cobwebs and dirt all over the stairway. The upstairs corridor was filled with broken glass and damp clothes lying here and there. As I flashed the light on the walls, I saw disturbing graffiti all over them. There were human skulls and demonic faces drawn on those walls. Someone even wrote, kill them all, kill, and stuff like that with red spray paint. I felt weird seeing all that. I told Stella, Hun, maybe we should wait in the car. The rain will stop in some time. Stella replied in a sarcastic tone. Why? Are you scared, Mark? I didn't say anything because I knew she would mock me more. We were walking in the hallway. The sound of the rain outside mixed with the whooshing wind created a hollowed echo in the corridor. At the end of the corridor stood a large door. On the door was written, Operation Ward. Stella was looking at the graffiti on the wall. I told her, what do you think used to happen here? Stella smiled and said, it's an operation theater, Mark. Why are you behaving so off? I said in an annoyed tone, because this place is not some theme park, Stella. The entire vibe of this place is off-putting. I don't know how can you not feel that? Stella looked at me in the same careless manner and said, Relax. This is just some abandoned hospital. We will look around a bit, then we'll leave. Stop making such a big deal out of it. I thought to myself, maybe I am just behaving like a dumb kid. It's quite clear that there's no one else here except the two of us. We reached the door of the operation theater. Stella pushed the door and with a terrible creaking sound, the door opened. I have never seen such a bizarre operation table. It was more like a stretcher, but there were leather handcuffs and belts strapped on it. There was a headspace on the table, which too had a leather strap. This time, I noticed Stella's face turning pale. She was checking all this stuff with a really freaked out face. I went close to the operation table. There were surgical tools lying on it. The tools were quite different too. The surgical knives were more like saws. There was a drilling tool as well. I picked it up and said to Stella, I wonder what is the use of this tool? Stella looked around with her fearful eyes and said, Oh my God, Mark, I don't think this is some ordinary hospital. I became surprised hearing that and said, What? What do you mean? Stella replied in the same fearful voice. I think this used to be an asylum for, you know, mentally unstable people. That's why there are belt straps and handcuffs all on the cabin beds. I think they had really violent patients. I realized she was right, but before I could ponder on this revelation for a few more seconds, my eyes went to the tip of the tool that I was holding in my hand. I said in a confused tone, there's something on the tip of this drilling tool. Flash your light on it, Stella. As Stella flashed her light on the tool, we realized it was nothing but dried blood. 
our hearts started to beat fast in fear. We inspected all the tools on the operation table and noticed almost all of them had dried blood spots. There was a freezer type thing in the corner of that room. Stella rushed towards it and opened the door. As she looked into the freezer, she started screaming at the top of her lungs. Oh my God! I ran towards her and soon came across the horror lying in front of her eyes. The freezer had various types of jars. The jars seemed really old and a reeking smell was coming out of them. In each jar, there was a human body part in it. Some had an ear, some nose, human tongue, fingers, brains, and a human head. We couldn't believe our eyes. I took out the jar with the human head in it. Stella said, I can't believe they used to treat the patients in such a gruesome manner. It was a man's head with his eyes closed. The face was horrible to look at, but what happened next still gives me the creeps when I think about it. Stella and I were inspecting the human head with a close look when suddenly the slitted head opened its eyes and started staring back at us. Out of fear and shock, we stepped back. The head then started to smile from ear to ear. Stella screamed as loud as she could and we started to run for our life. As I looked back, I saw a group of black shadows following us. They were whispering in their own demonic language. They stretched their hands towards us and started to run. I said in a panicked voice, Run, Stella, run! They're coming to get us! Stella and I stormed out of the asylum and hopped inside our car. We could hear the cry of hundreds of people coming from the asylum. It was like people screaming in pain. As we started the car, the cries turned into maddening laughter. Without thinking much, I pushed the accelerator so hard that the car started making a screeching noise. I won't be able to explain if you ask me how we came back home. All I remember is that somehow we did, and which is why we are still alive. Stella later researched about that abandoned asylum. She talked to a few local people and collected some bizarre news on this matter. People said the asylum used to be a home for mentally disabled criminals, but the doctors running that place used to torture them and run many inhuman experiments on them. Local people are scared to go there, even in daylight. They believe numerous spirits of those tortured patients still haunt that place. Hi, my name is Jack. I stay in Ohio with my brother. My brother and I have a knack for car racing. Since childhood, we have been highly active in outdoor sports. Last month, we went to the racing track and took part in an ongoing competition. My brother acquired the second place and I, on the other hand, met a terrible accident. I was fortunate enough to live through it, but there's one thing my family doesn't know till now. I don't think I will ever share this matter with them, but I feel like I need to tell someone, so, here I am with my utterly disturbing story. In that accident, I injured my arm badly. I got a few bruises and cuts all over my body. Along with all this, I hit my head really hard, resulting in immense bleeding. My brother rushed me into the hospital nearby and we had no time to get back to the city. The IMR racing track was situated in a hill area. Hence, there was only one hospital, the Fine Rest Hospital. Don't know why the name of the hospital still feels weird to me. My brother admitted me there and took a room in a hotel nearby so that he can stay with me until the recovery. The hospital was in the foothill of a mountain. The cabin I was kept in had a really nice view from its window. After two days of critical condition, I finally became stable. I had no idea what was happening around me because I was heavily sedated and in terrible pain. Whatever I just explained so far, I heard most of it from my brother. On the third day of my stay at the hospital, I woke up from my unconscious state in the middle of the night. As I opened my eyes in the middle of the night, I found myself lying on a bed with an oxygen mask, saline tubes, and God knows how many channels attached to my body. I took a few minutes to understand the room properly. I looked around and saw a middle-aged woman sitting on the couch in the cabin. From her getting up, I could tell she was a nurse. She was reading something sitting there. I said in a weak voice, Water, some water, please. The woman kept the magazine on the couch and walked towards me. I finally saw her face as she leaned on me. 
The woman was probably in her late 40s. She was wearing extreme makeup, which kind of freaked me out in my moment of trance. She then said in a high-pitched voice, Welcome back. This slowly lifted my head and helped me drink water from the glass. Before I could talk further, I again fainted. The next morning when I woke up, I felt much better. I saw my brother Charlie sitting next to my bed with a smiling face. He said with joyful eyes, I thought I lost you this time, and held my hand. I smiled back at him and said, You are not getting rid of me so easily, slugger. We both shared a laugh. He told me how our parents are freaking out and sitting at home. Dad wanted to come, but Charlie told him to calm down and he'd handle the entire situation all by himself. We were chatting and cracking jokes when a doctor and a nurse entered our room. The doctor said, So, Mr. Benz, you are a fighter. Your brother is just like you. He arranged everything and gave us full cooperation. He is the one who actually saved you. I was feeling really lucky at that moment when my eyes went to the nurse standing in the corner. She wasn't the one from last night. My brother stood up and left with the doctor. He told me that within four to five days, they will be able to shift me to the hospital close to my house. I was lying in bed thinking about everything I went through so far when the nurse came to me and started to change my saline. I said in a feeble voice, Um, can you please thank the nurse from last night? She helped me, but I was so weak that couldn't thank her. The nurse looked at me with a confused face and said, Um, okay. Uh, actually, it's tough to identify without knowing their names. If you could tell me her name, I will surely pay your regards to her. I forgot to ask her name last night, so I felt really awkward. The day nurse fed me the lunch and left. I slept for some time more. When I opened my eyes and noticed the sky from the window, I realized I slept through the entire evening. I looked at the clock and saw it was 8 p.m. I was thinking to call someone when I heard a familiar voice. As I looked at the cabin door, I saw the nurse from last night standing there and smiling at me. Her vividly painted red lips made her look really creepy. But she said, How are you feeling today, Jack? I smiled and said, Better. Sorry I forgot to thank you last night for helping me with the water. She didn't let me finish my sentence and said, It's our job. What is there to think about? She then slowly walked into my room and sat on the couch. She picked up a magazine and started to read it, just like last night. I kept lying there without saying anything more. After a while, another nurse entered the room. The nurse started to arrange my bed and put a table on it. She then looked at me and said, It's dinner time now. The second nurse kept working on her own while the night nurse sat on the couch quietly and read her magazine. I guess that she is probably the head nurse and thus she visits the patients to see if they are being taken care of or not. Without any single doubt, the arrangements and treatment of the hospital felt really nice to me. I had my dinner and all this time, none of the nurses spoke a single word to each other. One of the junior nurses left the room. I asked, what's your name, ma'am? This time, the nurse put down the magazine and looked at me. She <laughs> smiled at me and I noticed her crooked tooth. She replied, everyone calls me Nurse Belford. She then got up and left the room. Her behavior felt a bit odd to me because she just used to come to my cabin and sit there. Many times at night, I woke up from my sleep and saw her sitting on the couch watching me. Whenever our eyes met, she used to smile in a very creepy way. One morning, the junior nurse came with my breakfast. I told her, how come Nurse Belford never visits me during the daytime? The nurse spilled the juice on the food tray as if I have asked something terrifying. She then looked at me and I noticed drops of sweat on her forehead. She said in a low voice, how do you know about Nurse Belford? I replied in a confused voice, um, because she comes to visit me almost every night. I just felt a bit weird that she never comes during the daytime, hence I asked. The nurse asked me, you mean you actually saw her inside your room? I replied in an irritated tone. Of course, what kind of question is that? She was here when you came with dinner last night. Didn't you see her sitting on the couch? The nurse got all freaked out and said, listen to me very carefully. This is your last night at this hospital. You must do as I say. If Nurse Belford comes to visit tonight and asks you to go with her somewhere, 
You must not get out of this bed. Just call any of us, or rather scream, but don't go with her. I got completely freaked out with whatever she just told me. I said in a worried voice, What? What is this all about? The nurse then replied in a scared voice, Nurse Belford committed suicide last year in this hospital. Some of us still see her roaming around the corridors at night. Previously, she sometimes walks up to a young male patient and asks them to come with her. We have found three dead patients whose deaths were not natural at all. People say she had an affair with a man less than her age. The man eventually broke her heart, and since then, her haunting spirit tries to take revenge on young men who come here. My head was throbbing in pain. I couldn't believe all this time I was talking to a dead person. I didn't know what to do. I can't leave this hospital before morning. I have already put everyone in enough trouble, so I decided to sleep through the entire night. The nurse stayed with me till midnight, but she had two other patients to attend as it was a small hospital. She left and told me to lay on my bed and to keep my eyes closed. I kind of dozed off, but around 3 a.m., I heard a squeaky voice calling my name. Jack, open your eyes, Jack. I have a surprise for you. Goosebumps appeared on my skin. My heart started to beat like a wild horse. I didn't open my eyes. I realized it was Nurse Belford, but I still didn't react. Then I heard footsteps going out of the room. After lying on the bed like that for a few more seconds, I finally opened my eyes. The room was dark, but the moonlight from the window gave a clear view. There was no one in my room. I heaved a sigh of relief and turned to the left side of my bed, thinking, finally, it's all over now. As soon as my head turned to the left, I saw Nurse Belford placing her head on my bed and staring at me with angry, evil eyes. Her face was looking fucking scary. Blood was dripping from her red lips. Her eyes were so big that it could see into my soul. She then said, in a horrifying voice, you think you can ignore me like that? I was the one who took care of you, and now this is how you treat me? She then opened her mouth, and clouds of black flies came out of it. The sound of those flies made my ears numb. I felt like these flies were going to choke me and I won't live to see the sun in the morning. I screamed as loud as possible. The doctor and the junior nurse rushed into my room and switched on the cabin light. The doctor thought I had some kind of panic attack. The nurse stayed in my room till morning. When my brother came, I didn't speak a single word to him. I came back to my house that day, but even still now, when I close my eyes, I feel scared thinking what if I see Nurse Belford sitting beside my bed. 